Live from the Tang's house, it's you and Night Out Live! Christopher, we are on the air right now. Oh, shoot. Oh, my bad, my bad. Dude, my bad. I literally just gave a message last week about the importance of I listening know. and paying attention. I know, I know, my bad, it's a way. But what about all of those people like that are on their phones right now, scrolling through Instagram, and they're on tabs on their computer playing games and doing homework? You know what to do, guys. We're gonna close all that stuff so that we can be fully present with the program right now. That's right, but before you close those phones out, go ahead, send a text, and say hey or what's up to another student in the youth ministry. Because although we are physically apart, we still want to gather together in spirit. As many of you guys know, I'm Pastor Jordan. And I'm Pastor Christopher. And we've got an awesome program for you guys tonight. We're gonna to play some games, do some worship, check in with students, and then Pastor Christopher is going to continue our Mission Possible series. That's right, I'm bringing the fire tonight. Mm. And uh, before we do any of that, we are going to have a bit of fun. So right now, let's do just that. Uh, if you are on a phone, go ahead and transition to a computer so you can play along. And if you haven't already, Go ahead and say hi in the chat and let's go ahead and play a game. Hey there, 5 1 Youth. You know, these past few weeks where we haven't been meeting on Zoom, they've been tough on me. I miss seeing your faces, hearing your voices, but maybe most of all, I miss trying to figure out what the heck you're drawing when we play Scribble. So I've decided to bust out this classic quarantine game and we're going to play some online matches. So you guys play along at home. When you think you know what is being drawn, type it in the chat and we'll keep track of our own little score of who gets it uh, fastest. There's been some technical difficulties with other players, but hopefully now, yes, this guy looks like he's here, so we can begin. All right, this looks like an ear, maybe? Yes, all right. We are on the board. All right, Mufasa, what do you got for us? Okay, what the heck? Pound signed, checker, uh, tic-tac-toe, um, what the heck, um, number maybe, ha oh, hashtag, all right, well, that was pretty bad. I, I hope you guys got that one. I had to wait till he wrote it out. All right, we got a new player who is now gone. Sun, beach, light, rays. Photosynthesis, maybe. No. 
Tent. Oh, cool. Got it. Tent. I would have gone with a different color. I think green makes it look too much like a tree. But just by guessing enough, you know, sometimes you just got to throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, see, the using the green and the brown, I think, is a big mistake because it makes it look so much like a like a, 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 a plant of some kind. I get the fireplace, um, but I would have gone with more unnatural colors. All right, let's see. Easy one. Okay, wine glass. This should be easy. So, got to make a little goblet. And then put a little stemmy thing on there. And then we got to add the wine. Okay, let's make it bigger here. Yes, this is the wine glass. All right, I think I know what I need to do to add to help them out a little bit. We will draw a bottle. Right, and then oh, we're almost out of time. Come on, guys. Oh. All right, not the best drawing. I'm also using, I don't have a, I don't have a mouse. I'm using a trackpad. Hope that excuses some of my uh, um, slow, slow drawing. All right, let's see what we got. Bit of pointy action, and then it can come down here. And then let's make a hilt out of gold. All right, not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but. One guy got it. All right, there's our sword. I think it's pretty, pretty clearly a sword. Let's see how we can add it. We can maybe add a spike. Okay, they got it. one youth it's been a while well i just wanted to check in and see how you guys are doing um well i want to talk about what i've been up to during lockdown are we still in lockdown i don't know but i got a haircut as you can see um my sister actually helped me cut it she was supposed to cut off three inches but she chopped off six so <laughs> That's why my hair is so short, but yeah, I'll show you guys what I got since lockdown started. There's a few things that I bought and it's been pretty useful. Okay, number one is, I, is my stand-up desk right here. I use it for work. It's good because I don't want to sit all day, you know, need to get some sort of exercise in even if it's standing. My second item is my router right here. Um, that's actually the extension, but my internet has been really fast since changing my router. And my third item, I actually just used this today, is my air fryer. You put stuff in, fry it up. And I'm back in my room. Um, oh, one more thing. I keep this fan right next to me. It's not a new item that I bought, but it's been really hot, so I just keep it here and it accompanies me. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. It was really good to check in with you guys. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, it's Brianna and Carissa. So we've been doing really great and we've been staying home, looking for things to do. And then we came across this mini sewing machine that was really great and we can make a lot of things out of it. So I made this tote bag that's really cute and I can't wait until I get to use it when everything reopens. And I made these DIY scrunchies, which was a lot easier than I expected and it's actually really fun making. That's it, bye! 
Hey guys, it's Audrey for the check-in video and I just want to give you a little update on how I'm doing in quarantine. And so recently I got a bird, her name is Coco. Um, I think I got her like about, she likes to eat everything, but I think I got her about like a month ago or so. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye. Hey guys, we are about to enter into a time of worship. So I know we've been giving you a hard time about having other tabs open or playing games, but for real, we really need you to zero in on what we're about to do. Go before the presence of God and lift up our voices in song and praise to him. Pastor Christopher, would you pray us in? I would love to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. God, we thank you that you are a God who is worthy of our praise. And Father, right now, as we go before you in worship, would you fill our hearts with praise? Would your Holy Spirit lead us in worship? And God, even though we're far apart in different homes, God, would our uh, voices go up before you in one song and with one voice? And may our worship be acceptable before you, Lord. Uh, we thank you. We love you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
You know, one of my favorite things that I love about secret agent movies uh, like 007 or um, The Kingsman are all of the ridiculous spy gadgets that they seem to have, or like in Spy Kids, right? There's just these crazy gadgets that they have that just seem to come in handy for this one specific situation, right? Whether it's like exploding toothpaste or a pen that shoots a laser or, uh, you know, an underwater jetpack for some reason or, um, you know, a, a, a one person submarine or, uh, you know, a car with um, self inflating tires, um, you know, a bagpipe that's actually a flamethrower you know, whatever it is, there just seems to be these gadgets that all of these spies have that allow them to be prepared for any and every situation that comes their way. Preparation is key if you're going to be a secret agent, right? You've got to have the right gadgets. You've got to be prepared for any kind of crazy situation that comes at you. And if there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us, it's that anything can happen in this world. And if there's one thing that I really think we take away from this pandemic as a world, as a society, it's that the, we need to be able to be prepared for the unexpected, right? And so there's all kinds of things that can happen that we just can't have control over. I remember when the, the pandemic first happened and there's all these people waiting in these super long lines to get toilet paper and you know some people are waiting in line for hours and they go to the store and there's no more toilet paper and i remember watching this one sad video of this woman who's crying because there's just no more toilet paper she doesn't know what to do it's the third store that she's been to and she can't find any and back at my house i still had my costco pack of toilet paper that i had bought well before the pandemic even started that i was still going through Right? I was prepared when it came to toilet paper. I never had to worry and I never had to wait in line to get my toilet paper. It was great. And so we need to be prepared for all kinds of things, whether we're secret agents or not. And as we're continuing in week three of our series, Mission Possible, that's what I want us to talk about today is preparation, about being prepared. Because as Christians, all of us have been invited into a mission. We've been given this great commission by God that we read about in Matthew chapter 28. Let's read that again right now. It says this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So if you know Jesus, this is your mission. This is your mission. You are invited to be a part of this worldwide global mission to make disciples, to be a part of something that will have an impact for eternity. And, you know, for some of you guys that are wondering whether or not your life really matters or whether or not you really have that much significance in this world, let me just remind you that Jesus himself has invited you, yes, you, into one of, into the most important mission of all time that affects somebody for all time. And he wants you to be a part of it. He's chosen you to be a part of it. He has a role for you to play in his kingdom. And so you have significance and you have value and you have worth and he wants to use you. So there's no way that you should ever feel like you don't have significance because God has given you the most significant mission that there is. Now, when it comes to the first disciples that Jesus invited into this mission, there was one disciple named Peter. And Peter was one of, the, uh, one of the first disciples that Jesus chose. And Peter was kind of this hot-headed guy. And he was one of the earliest leaders of the church. And he was just this kind of guy that just, he jumped into things. And he, when he was in something, he was in it. 
right? You know those people who when they're about something, they just go all in 110% every time, right? They don't like, they don't just tiptoe their, their foot into the pool, they jump in, right? That's how they get into the pool. And that can be great at times, but at other times, uh, it means Peter can be kind of impulsive, right? And so in, our, in the Gospels, we see this picture of Peter where Jesus comes out and he comes out to Peter when he's a fisherman and he says, come, follow me, be my disciple. Peter literally says, okay, drops his fishing nets and just follows Jesus, just leaves his boat, leaves his stuff, goes after Jesus, right? I'm all in. There's this other time when all of the disciples are on the middle of a lake in a boat and they see Jesus approaching, walking on the water. Everyone is terrified and Peter goes, hey Jesus, if you tell me to come out to you and walk on the water to you, I'll do it. And so Jesus says, okay, and Peter gets out of the boat and walks on the water with Jesus for a little bit. And then he panics and he starts freaking out and he begins to fall into the water and Jesus reaches, our, reaches out and saves him. But I mean, who thinks to even ask Jesus if they can walk out on the water? And P Peter often spoke out too soon. He was, he was super hasty and he had super strong opinions and Sometimes he said things that Jesus had to correct strongly. I mean, there was one time where Peter spoke out against Jesus and Jesus had to say to him, get behind me, Satan. And then just before Jesus was arrested and sentenced to go to the cross, he knew that his disciples were going to deny him. And Peter stands up and says, Jesus, Lord, I will never deny you. I swear it. And Jesus says, Peter, I promise you, before the rooster crows three times, or before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And he was right. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus before the rooster crowed that next day. And that same night when, um, when the men came to arrest Jesus, Peter takes out a sword and probably it seems like he tries to cut a guy's head off, but instead he misses and he just cuts a guy's ear off and the guy's bleeding everywhere and Jesus picks up the ear and he puts it back on the guy and heals him, looks over at Peter, put your sword away, come on. So Jesus could have seen Peter's impulsiveness and his hot headedness as a negative quality, but instead, Jesus saw in Peter passion and loyalty. He chose to see in Peter the potential to be the kind of leader that Peter could be. So when Jesus asked his disciples who they thought he was, Peter was the first person to say, you are the Messiah. And so Jesus gave uh, Peter the name that he had, because before, people called him Simon. But Jesus said, you are going to be called Peter or Petros in Greek, which means rock. You're going to be a rock. You're going to be the foundation of the church that Jesus was building. And so Peter had flaws, but Jesus saw in Peter that he was ready to take action. He needed to mature. He needed to grow up. But he knew that he would be the kind of person who would be prepared when the time came to do what he needed to do. So eventually he did mature. He did grow up. He received the Holy Spirit and grew in Christ so that he became the leader that Jesus always knew he would be. And so after Jesus left, his disciples, they carried out the mission that Jesus gave him. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. Because the disciples went out and went over the earth and spread the gospel. And the church grew. And as it grew, Peter and the other leaders, they had to face new challenges. It wasn't enough just to share the gospel. They needed to find a way to teach and to disciple these new believers in far off communities with new Jesus followers that didn't have the same background as them. And then the Roman government, they didn't like this new religion that was spreading. 
that was calling other someone other than Caesar Lord. And so they were threatening people. They were imprisoning people. They were even killing people who called themselves Christians. And so Peter writes a letter to these new believers. It's a letter that now we call 1 Peter. And I want to read to you some of what Peter wrote to his fellow believers um, in 1 Peter 1. It says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So Peter wanted these new believers to know it's worth it. It's worth it. Everything that you're going through, all of these different trials, man, no matter what happens, it's worth it. And then later on in the letter, Peter says this, now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So here's what Peter's advice was to these new believers. Be ready. Be ready to act. Be ready to speak up. Be ready to do good. Just like we've been saying these last few weeks, he wanted to remind them of the gospel, that they should show the gospel not just with their words, but in their actions. That if their lives, if their lives showed hope and love and compassion, it would give them opportunities to talk about their faith. And so here's some ways that Peter says we can be ready to talk about the good news of Jesus with others. The first is this, to love each other. Our love for others demonstrates the love of God. Now, here's where we need to get real with this, okay? We can talk about our love for each other, but let's be real. Right now, most of you guys are talking with other people online or through text messages. And the reality is when we're online, we often talk about people and say things that we wouldn't normally say out loud or in front of the other person. And so as we're online, here's my guess. I don't have statistics or research on this, but my guess is this. The amount of bullying online has gone way up. The amount of gossip online has gone way up. The amount of uh, things that you know you shouldn't be saying has gone way up. The kinds of ways that you have been demonstrating love through your speech with, uh, with other people, around other people, has gone down. Because way too easily, when, when, whenever we're communicating digitally, it just distances us from the actual human, and we start saying things and we forget that there's another person on the other side. So if we want to be people who have the opportunity to share our faith, who are readying ourselves to share the gospel, how about we love each other and show that love by just sharing good things about each other online? Whenever we're talking about somebody online, whenever we're um, sharing stories about people, we're building each other up, we're encouraging each other, we're saying good words, we're loving each other. Repay evil with good. Now, this, 
This is not natural, and that's exactly why it's important. Anybody can be rude, anybody can be insulting, anybody can be vengeful, spiteful, anybody can be a troll online and in real life. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take talent, it doesn't take skill. Anybody can do it. But followers of Jesus are called to live and tweet differently than the rest of the world. And so when people say things about you, how do you respond? Are you going to respond to those comments, to that bullying with mean comments? Are you gonna respond in kind or are you going to respond with kindness? Repay evil with good. Number three, don't be afraid. Be bold and trust God. You don't have to worry about what other people are gonna say about you. You have the truth. You know what is true in Christ Jesus, and so you can be bold with what you know. Next is have an answer. Right? If we're going to be ready, we have to have an answer. Peter said that when we live in a way that is different from the rest of the world, people are going to want to know why. Right? Why is that guy so positive? Why is that guy so encouraging? They don't gossip like these other people do. They don't say the same things like these other people do. They don't put down other people. They don't seem to be so obsessed with themselves like other people are. They seem to actually care about other people. They're focused on other people more than they are themselves. What is it about them? When I talk to them, I feel better about myself. That is so different than other people. I want to know why. And that is when we are able to give an answer. When people ask us questions, you go, you know what? Here's why. I care about other people and I love other people because, man, that's exactly how Jesus treats me. He cares about me more than he does himself. He loved me before I ever loved him. And so I want to love other people before they ever love me. We're able to talk about the faith that we have. And then last, be gentle. Be gentle. There's no need to shove anything down anybody's throat. There's no need to be rude. There's no need to be forceful. There's no need to demand that other people hear us or spam anything. We don't need to make people hear us. So just be gentle. We don't need to be pushy. When someone asks, awesome, we get to share. If they don't want to hear it, then they don't need to hear it. They're not ready, and that's okay. So as we are moving forward with this mission that is possible, the mission to reach the entire world with the gospel and to make disciples of every single nation, of every single language, of every single people group. The things that we've covered so far is that, number one, you need to be real. You need to be authentic and genuine. Just be who you are. Number two, you need to be helpful. Right? Be helpful. Show that you care about other people. They're not going to want to know what you know before they know that you care. And then number three, be a listener. Listen to where they are and have empathy and hear them out. And then now number four, you need to be ready. Be ready to be able to respond to the opportunities when they come your way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. God, we thank you that you have invited us into this mission. Lord, this mission of sharing your gospel with the world and making disciples. God, we thank you that you have seen in us the potential for greatness. Lord, you have counted us significant. You have counted us worthy of being a part of your mission in the world. God, we thank you. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us and to lead us as we join you in your mission of restoring and reconciling the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Christopher, for reminding us how important it is to be prepared so that we can give an account for what we believe. We just got a couple announcements before we close. 
The first is small groups are starting back up again in August. So get ready to be able to discuss what we've been learning yes. and uh, have a little bit of fun and fellowship together. Yes, can't wait for that. Uh, and next is the Mission Possible Challenge. So here is your Mission Possible Challenge for this week. Click on the link in the description and then find the link that says Mission Possible. Click on it and you will have a series of four questions to answer. And these questions are to help you think through what God has done in your life and how he has moved for you. What we'll do on our end is we'll take your answers, we will send them to you and put them on a nice little card so that you can put that up on your wall or on your desk so that you can always be reminded of how God has moved in your life so that you can always be ready. And back by popular demand, we are meeting on Zoom after the video, but only middle schoolers this week. High schoolers, we will meet next week after the video, but if you're in middle school after this is over, head on over to Zoom for discussions. That's right. And last but not least, this Sunday, we are not going to be having our Sunday morning watch party on Discord. So this Sunday, no Sunday morning watch party for our English service. And Pastor Christopher, will you bless us with a benediction? Yes. Receive this blessing. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and honor both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. All right, students. See you next middle time. Middle schoolers, see you on Zoom.